All right, today we're going to be talking about the big boys, the big guy in space, the king of artillery, the lord and savior of space. Today we're going to be talking about the much beloved Titan, a ship class that I feel is rather misunderstood and should probably be approached a little bit differently than some people think they should be. Basically, a lot of people seem to be thinking that the Titan is a glorified weapons platform, which is in some aspects, yes, kind of correct, in others, not so much. So let's talk about the Titan itself and the way it is structured and what kind of weapons we can put on there. But coming from, well, let's put it this way, the Titan's main weapon is not its guns, and we will illustrate as such. Now, when can you build a Titan? Well, once you have the built Titan technology, you will need to build a Citadel with a Titan foundry on the actual station, which can take a lot of time. On top of that, you will be given a free Titan build limit right at the start of the game. The game has a minimal amount of Titans that you can build set at one, which by itself is uh, is is rather fortuitous because, well, let's put it this way: you can only build another Titan if you have more than 200 fleet cap, or 400, or 600, or 800. With increments of 200, you will be able to build yet another Titan with a maximum of 20, which is a rather significant amount. This has been updated since 2.0.2, and this is also the version that we're going to be talking about today. Now, the thing is with Titans, they are the, one of the slowest moving vessels in the game. They also have the lowest combat disengagement chance, which is rather frustrating if you want to make sure that your Titans come out of a battle alive. And it's... Um, Let's put it this way, uh, it's not recommended to send them in versus overwhelming numbers. So with all the housekeeping out of the way, let's go and take a look at the actual Titan design and what actually works. So once we go into our uh, ship designer, you will find yourself that the Titan really only has one or two or three even sections available. It's the Titan bow, the Titan core, and the Titan stern. Now the Titan core and the Titan stern uh, have a combined firepower of six large slots, which can be anything from a neutron launcher to, say, kinetic artillery. In all honesty, plasma, gamma, and gauss cannons are really not all that interesting. Neutron launchers are great for bypassing uh, armor and doing a lot of additional damage to hull, although they're not very good against shields. Whereas kinetic artillery, some people would refer to it as the big daddy of the battlefield, very good versus shields and uh, not that good against armor and also not that good versus hull. Uh, so in my opinion, the neutron launchers in general are by far the best and then use uh, a combined firepower of flanking battleships to take down shields and then uh, basically strip down the armor as well as the hull. But this is, of course, not why we're here. We're here for the main attraction. That is the Perdition Beam, a cross-system weapon that does between 5,000 and 10,000 damage to any target. It has a cooldown of 21 days, which means that every 21.75 days, this bad boy can shoot. But the one thing you need to watch out for is that it does have a firing arc which means that it basically needs to point its big gun towards the target it wants to shoot basically it's the world's most simplest point and click adventure where big gun clicks on man uh, on top of that we with this particular setup we get 12 large utility and component slots which can be which can be anything from obviously your uh, basic armor or if you've decided to, to raid the panty drawer of the fallen empires even some dark matter deflectors always good stuff uh, this is only the only class that uh, receives three uh, additional slots uh, for the well their additional component components which can be anything from regenerative hull tissue to advanced reactor boosters or even some uh, capacitors and whatnot that's completely up to you we're not going to be talking about that layout today because because when it comes to the titans the weapons don't really matter the Titans are basically the best support ship 
in the game for one reason and one reason only and that is its aura effects. Now there are six different flavors of them. We're gonna start off with the shield dampener, which gives hostile ships a 20% uh, shield hit points a D modifier, which basically means they'll have 20% less shields on them, which if you're running an anti-armor faced fleet can be very useful because you'll be able to knock their shields down and then of course their armor and whatnot. The quantum destabilizer, which uh, decreases the fire rate on enemy ships by 10%, also very nice the subspace snare which previously was only available on space stations you will find that a lot of these aura effects that were originally on space stations before 2.0 have been moved to the titan uh, which reduces the emergency ftl cooldown from uh, enemy ships by uh, well it increases by 100 and also it reduces their combat disengagement chance basically it locks the enemy onto the field for a longer time allowing your ships to stampede through them even longer then there is the inspiring pres uh, presence which is a defensive aura which increases your fire rate on your own fleet by five percent uh, by the way, it does say own fleet, but as far as I know, it is system-wide. So that is all the ships nearby that are applied to your own dude bros. Targeting grid, effect on own fleet, tracking plus 10%, especially if you're rocking a lot of ships with very large guns, shooting things like corvettes and destroyers, incredibly handy, especially if you're running in late game and you're very much ahead of the enemy. You're running around with battleships and cruisers, and the enemy may still be relying a lot on destroyers, and you have a lot of large guns and you don't really want to refit your ships, then having the targeting grid is incredibly useful and finally there is the nanobot cloud which uh, increases the daily hull regeneration plus one which by itself in combination with regenerative hull tissue uh, is stacks on top of that if you also have living metal which also gives you another daily armor regeneration bonus can get out of control very friggin quickly so how do you use these ships say you have five available or even six available titan slots do i just build say um six ships with quantum destabilizers no you don't because the abilities do not stack in a perfect world if you have six titan slots available as in you can build six of them they should all be different which is why in this particular scenario i have pre-built four different types each single one with a different aura effect because they are system wide they apply to all your ships and they do not stack which causes some problems which basically means that if you unless you are actively using your prediction beams to one shot stuff from across the system then well you should never have more than six titans on the field and should probably spread out your firepower a little bit more effectively across systems, across your fronts, and whatnot. Uh, the titans themselves are an incredibly interesting addition with their super long-range perdition beam, uh, which obviously can knock down battleships in one shot, which can be very, very useful. But still, their aura effects are absolutely invaluable, and you should definitely take some time to invest and try to pick the aura effect that you feel is going to work best in your situation. For instance, let's say you have overwhelming firepower. The subspace snare is the way to go. Are there a lot of enemy ships on the field? Fire rate, absolutely. Uh, shield dampener. Is the enemy using a lot of shields? Shield dampener it is. Are you using a lot of armor? Nanobot cloud, no questions asked. Targeting grid. Are you using a lot of large ships versus smaller ships? Targeting grid. If you don't have enough titans, if for instance you only have one, just refit your Titan when necessary, based on the opposition that you are expecting to have. Feel free, because the the up the uh, change is, I think, only like 25 minerals, which by itself is absolutely marginal. This was a overview of Titans. I know that they are not nearly as complex as some people would have have it. Uh, have it. The Fallen Empire Titans are a little bit more powerful with more guns and more slots and whatnot, but still, um, the player titans are still pretty badass and pretty useful as, as it, when it comes to being a strategic target as well as a flagship for your individual fleets and of course you can add more to one fleet if you really want to i hope this video was useful to you and if you uh 
think it was the case and give it a like if you like this series of videos give it a subscribe but uh in the meantime i'm gonna go and sign off here thank you so much for watching and until next time take a good care of yourselves and as always each other